MMA True Believers. I am Jason Burgos for SureDot.com, and I have the great pleasure of being joined by one of the very elite talents of one championship. He is currently the promotion's featherweight champion, a former lightweight title holder, as well as a one-time champ champ. He will be headlining the organization's stack Dawn of Heroes event on August 2nd in the Mall of Asia Arena in Manila. He is the situation to many, but you can also just call him <laughs> Martin. I mean, but before before he even says hello to all of you, I have to immediately jump in and to ask an important, groundbreaking, maybe the most important question I have during this entire show for you, Mr. Situation, sir. And that is, what is the official and correct way to say your last name? I've seen Chiavello say it one way. I've seen Dom Lau say it another way. I've seen people in here in the U.S. say it another way. How do you say your name correctly so the world can know? Around around the world, it's it's said all different. Like everyone has their own way of saying it, but how I say it in Australia is new when. New when it's almost like new win, but with the when new when. New when yeah, but um, I mean I've I've heard cases in uh, the states where people say win. Yep. Um, in Vietnam, it's uh, wing. Uh, everywhere else is new yen and new when, and how I've been saying it is new when. Is it to a point that you've had to deal with that from, I'm sure, most of your life that it's like whatever, as long as you get the Martin part right at this point? <laughs> yeah, like, I didn't really care, man. Like, it, it's, it, it's each to their own, I guess, at the end of the day. As long as they call you Mr. Champ, sir, that's that's the most important thing, right? <laughs> that's the most important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Now, this is your third straight main event. Six out of the last seven cards you've had, you've been on, you've been in the main event. As much as anyone on the entire one roster you are one of their best and brightest, and you're marketed as such. First, do you feel that weight of pressure and responsibility as one of the faces and prime examples of what the brand represents? And also, is that p another part of the bond you have with Angla and Song? Because he is in the same position, that he's one of those promoted heavy faces of the brand that's one of those stars that has that weight on him. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, um, being a main event, being co-main event, it doesn't really matter, man. It's For me, personally, it's more of the fact of being able to compete on the world stage, like, with the most elite, um, and, you know, putting being put on a pedestal to be main event. Sure, it's uh, you get a kick out of it saying, yeah, like, I'm headlining... Uh, like a stack card, but um, ultimately it's not the it's not the main focus. The main focus is being able to, you know, showcase your skills at the highest level um, and yeah, on the biggest cards available. All right, so you're being very humble. I respect that you're a good guy. You're humble. <laughs> no, <absolutely. laughs> since you brought up stacked card, you know, you are on a card where you're main eventing, uh, you know, with legends on the other card, Eddie Alvarez. And Demetrius Johnson, you are the main event just in your seventh year in the career. Do you ha is there some point you kind of looked at and you just you, you brush the shoulder off a little bit? Like that's pretty cool. <laughs> Demetrius Johnson is on my undercard. Is, is it a little surreal? Look, you get as I said, man, you get a bit of a kick out of it, and you're like, oh man, like any fights on that card realistically can be a main event. Um, it just so happens that they chose me, and like, I'm honored, and yeah, I'm thankful, and I'm ready to put on a show for uh, the Philippines, man. So when you have a major promotion like One Championship, which continues to grow, it, it, it's it's kind of at this point probably no, no doubt the number two promotion in the world. Some people may deny it, but it probably is. It's working its way towards the UFC. It's, it's, it's just big already, and it's growing. When you have the support of such a major promotion like that behind you, you know, your main events, your focal point, is there really any kind of interest in like something like the UFC? And, and, and you know, I know you're, you're originally from Vietnam, but you grew up a lot in Australia, and UFC is making inroads in Australia. They're really trying to build that market. The, in Adesanya from New Zealand, close by, uh, Whitaker, big star. It, does the UFC really interest you at in this point, considering how good things are with one championship? You look, on, to be honest, man, I'd be lying if I said um, it doesn't interest me, but. At the end of the day, I, I, I show my loyalty, and my loyalty is to one championship. I just recently signed a new ten fight, uh, ten fight deal, wow. four and a half years with him. Uh, um, look, UFC is UFC, Bellator is Bellator, um, KSW. You got PFL, man. You got all these leagues out there, which are doing their own thing. Um, I've established myself in Asia. I've established myself uh, with the help of one championship, and I just show my loyalty, man. And you know, whether whatever it is, what, what, whatever one championship offer, um, I'm, I'm just glad to enjoy the ride and go from there, man. When, I mean, so ten fights, four years—that's the terms, right? 
That's right, man. When you get something like that, it's like, holy, what? Holy sh 10, 4, whatever. Yes, I'll sign. Or do, or do you have to do your due diligence and you have to go, okay, let me let me look at the turn. Let me have my lawyer. I mean, or just honestly, was it a blow your way? Like, are there extra incentives? Because I know when I talked to Demetrius Johnson when he first signed, you know, one of the big things for him was, uh, you know, that he's going to be a part of the esports thing that we're, that one championship is working on. For Eddie Alvarez, when I talked to him, he mentioned, um, you know, like he's, there's like a future after, there's plans for him after fighting. So were there extra? I don't. I know you can't get too specific, or maybe you can. I appreciate it. You know, <laughs> are there any specific yeah, look, to extras? Look, there's always opportunities after after fighting with one championship. And you mean, I mean, they've got like the new one studios, the esports. Mm. They've got everything that could particularly um, help a fighter. You know, but um, look, it's at the end of the day, what I'm focused on at the moment is just my career, and that's uh, trying to establish my legacy. Um, when it came to signing this 10 fight deal, sure, there was like a bit of uh, speed bumps in a way. I mean, it's a big, it's a big contract to sign and four and a half years is a big, big, big ask, you know, um, and how I saw it, look, I, I thought of it for my family's sake, for my sake and for the company's sake and, you know, fans wise as well. Um, it's, it's, it, it realistically, it's doable. Um, I, I mean, I've been fighting, I fought last year, I fought five title fights in 11 months. So, um, man, I was just thinking of it like I'm trying to get three fights out this year, and then as of next year, start going down from two fights, two fights, two fights, depending on how healthy I am, um, and how my body feels. Man, I, I think I can pull this off and uh, you know, complete this contract and go from there, see how my body feels, and see if uh, <laughs> wants to push on. What's what's your thoughts on, on the studio? I mean. You're a good-looking guy, young guy. Would you want to do movies? Is something that you want to do? I mean, if anyone can be uh, the future future star of, of movies from one, it's it's Martin Wen. I Martin Martin you win. <laughs> Sorry, I said it wrong. It's um uh, that's Brendan Burris. Uh, look, honestly, for me, uh, I can't act. I can't lie. Um, can't act. Yes. Buck one yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, all this is in the, all that all all that is in the, in the in the works, man. But for for now, um, I'm just focused on my fighting career and um, see what opportunities arise later on um during my career. But um, for now, it's just you know putting my name uh on the MMA map and going from there. All right. So I mean, we'll put Martin in you and when new no new when new when right new when <laughs> Martin. We and you win, and you win. I'm gonna just mess it up. I'm sorry, but let, we're gonna put the just add you win. You win. All right. So we're gonna put the the Martin on, on as the next James Bond for like 2030. We'll put that on hold for for now. And and and, <laughs> and look, we'll get back to fighting now. For your opponent next week, Kiyomi Matsu, uh, Mat, Matsushima. Excuse me. Um, he's far different a test for you than Jadamba, you know, which we talked a lot about when we talked last time. We talked a lot about the John Jadamba fight. If anybody didn't see it or hear it, you can go back and look at that, you know, from then. Matsushima is fast and moves around a good bit, throws good kicks. You know, he, he definitely has pop in his hands, as you've shown in his record. Uh, and in, and in his last fight, you know, he's just entering the fourth year of his MMA career. But do you feel he's as dangerous as some of the very talented fighters you have fought before? Like at Edward Foliang, Christian Lee, Kevin Belignan, and Bibiano Fernandez. Is he a serious threat to your title next week? Of course, man. Like any, anyone that I, anyone that I compete against is a, is a major threat. Um, you know, we, we fight on the larger stage in, uh, in Asia and for them to uh, have a crack at a world title, um, for one championship, it, it means that they're more than ready and it means that they prove themselves, um, to the promotion that they deserve to hang with the best. So anyone that I come across against in that, uh, in that cage, um, is a major threat. Um, Masashima, for instance, he, I mean, he, he's taken out an ex- ex-champion and yeah. he uh, dominantly beat a guy who was on a winning streak knocking guys out you know so um hats off to him he deserves it and um come next friday night he, he has to prove to me how much he he wants it and i'm willing to die in there man i'm willing to go crazy um and do whatever it takes to get my hand raised and um you know to be the champion you have to take out a champion um and we'll see what he's got what tools he's raised and what um what he's been working on the last uh, eight and a half weeks or eight weeks that uh, he's been, yeah, you know, it's been offered. So we'll, we'll go from there. What work have you done with uh, Henry Hoof and the team in in, uh, in Hard Knocks 
to prepare for his particular style. Have you done anything different, or it's kind of been status quo from what you did, did like the last time for the John Jadama fight and all the work you've done with Hard Knocks 365 so far? Yeah, man. Like, um, since since being a Hard Knocks man, I feel I feel like I can say it, but showing it is another thing. Um, man, I've evolved so much, man. Um, after that bout against Jadamba, I feel that um, I'm a complete different fighter from that. Mm. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see on fight night. Um, I'll make sure all all cylinders are firing, and you know I haven't been posting much about this this fight camp in particular because we want uh, we don't want to give anything away um, in particular um, that could you know ruin our chances of you know um, winning. But um, man, we I, I feel to be honest, man, I'm, I've, I've reached that next level. And there's there's so many levels that you can reach, but for me, I've reached at a level where no one at the moment right now um, can take me out. Hmm. One thing we talked about a, a good bit when we talked the last time was the whole transitioning to, to training here in the U.S. And, and being away from your family, which is really tough for you. I mean, you you know, th now you've done it a couple times now. Has it gotten any easier? You know, did your family join you for a bit during training camp? Like, how was the situation like that? Because I know it's really tough for you. And it, that's one of the – I was actually just talking to Matt Schnell a little while ago, and he was talking about, like, sacrifices. And sacrifices isn't necessarily the training. The sacrifices is being away from your family. He was He's away from his wife for training. How has that been for you in this camp? Yeah, so um, it, it was the same situation, man. My wife, um, she stayed home and she looked after the kids. I spent eight weeks and five days in Florida. Hot AF. Um, <laughs> More than Australia, day. really. It's the humidity, right? <laughs> Dude, right now in Australia, it's like degrees-wise, it's like maybe five degrees, eight degrees, uh, cold as shit, which is I think Farron. Because <laughs> it's winter there, right? It's summer here, winter there? Mm. That's right, man. So. Being being summer in Florida, um, the humidity, <laughs> um, training with guys who have high pace and high cardio, and you always got to keep up with them. You, your energy just runs out after like the first round. Um, you push on to the, it's just a mental, men, a big mental game, and you know, um, yeah, it does make you mentally stronger going over there, um, sacrificing a lot, being away from my my family, and you know, thank God for technology. I was um, <clears throat> I was. Uh, you know, FaceTiming them every day and I was doing everything I can with them um, over the phone. I was talking to them, still liaising with them. They they express how much they miss me and I, I did the same thing. So we, we still spoke and um, it was mentally challenging, but um, I think it, it's what shapes you and what, what molds you as a martial artist, you know? This is your second fight this year and you mentioned you want to get a, a third fight in there. Is that, you know... Is it like a, a for sure thing you want to get a third fight? Because when we talked last time, you, you talked really about you want to make a concerted effort to solidify your place as the featherweight champion, your legacy as a featherweight champion. Is there, because, for example, I, I talked to Angeli a couple of weeks ago. She already has her, her fight before the last, last fight. She already has an October fight set. Is there kind of already been loose conversations about, you know, what you're maybe looking for, so a specific month, date period for, you know, your next possible title offense later this year? Yeah, so there's definitely been loose conversations, um, but it's it's something that I really want to do. So, I mean, one championship in Chachri in general, he's always there. I mean, all we got to do is we ask and he can try to deliver uh, as best as he can to help us out. Um, I, I, I personally feel that this is probably my last year that I want to push three, three to four fights out a year. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to go back down to the two fights a year and, you know, maintaining a, a healthy career. Um, both outside the octagon and inside the octagon, in, inside the cage, sorry, as well as um, you know, just just keeping myself healthy in general. Um, so I, yeah, there's there's been loose conversations of me trying to um, get on a particular card, and we'll see, man. I, I take one fight at a time. Uh, hopefully, I pull out of this fight injury free mm -hmm. and get straight back into that. I'm glad you mentioned the octagon or, or cage. Um, do you have a preference, cage or, or ring? Cage, circle, <laughs> it's ring. Um, yeah, look, this this next bout is going to be in the ring. So um, it's, it's it's definitely something that I I've, I've fought in the ring before, but it's been a while. So I, it's something that I've um, 
gotten accustomed to training into tra- training at Hard Knocks because mm. all free mat, free open, um, free like, free floor. So uh, I barely use the, the wall. I barely use any cage work. So everything's been um, yeah, man, just mat space and yeah, scrambles and yeah, everything from there. Now I mentioned Andrew Lee before. I, I talked to her brother a little bit before that, like a couple months ago, and of course he's still very interested in, in, in another shot at the situation. Um, you beat him twice. Uh, would a, a third fight interest you more so for the possibilities to be a two-time champ, champ, or do you, you know, the last fight with you two was was close in the judges' eyes? Does a third fight interest you just because you like competing against him and he's a talented fighter? Is it both? Is it, you know, what's your interest in a possible third fight with Christian Lee for the lightweight title? Maybe 2020. Look, to be honest, um, Christian, he, he, he's doing his thing. Um, he just recently won the lightweight title. Um, congratulations. But um, look, that last that, that last bout with him was kind of like a turnoff for me. Um, because uh, there was so much hype behind it and so much things that you know, came out of his mouth that he was going to do, which didn't deliver. So, I mean, I didn't. I, I could say the same thing that I, I kind of didn't deliver as well. But it was just, yeah, that a third possible rematch for me, man. It's it's something that has to, you know, spark a spark a fire inside me to, you know, yeah. um, kind of kind of accept it. But at the moment, as of right now, he's doing his own thing in a different division, <clears throat> and I'm doing my thing in uh, my home division. And um, who knows? The stars might align. Um, they might not. Um, I mean, he's got a hell of a task ahead of him, and uh, I did, I have noticed that he he's grown a lot. So um, I don't know if him making. Ever wait again? I, I don't. I don't see that as a possibility. But he can prove me wrong in, you know, the future. Well, I don't know what it will hold, but we'll go from there. Since you are a face of the organization and you know have some influence, is it? It's a tough. It's tough question time. I have some tough questions for you, um, because. <laughs> <laughs> because you are an honest guy, you know. Recently, one announced they will be forming a management agency. What What are your thoughts on that? Is that something you would be open to being a client of? Does it worry you at all? Do you feel there might be conflict of interest when something like that comes out? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I think that that management company it's more for commercial business. So like, um, like bringing in sponsorships and you know looking after our athlete. Um, outside of like fighting, you know, because um, you know, they try to make it as fighting is not everything, you know. Um, yeah, we we are martial artists, and that's where we, we were born and bred to to compete against each other. But they they that that company was brought up to bring in opportunities outside um, the cage, and yeah, I'm 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 a part of that organization, one elite agency, and they they have been looking after me and. Um, yeah, I've done a few, I've done a commercial. I've done a few things with them, and you know, um, everything's slowly coming together, man. Like they had, they're doing their thing. My management company over in Australia, they're doing their thing. So I've I've got the best of both both worlds. Um, and at the end of the day, it's it's all benefiting all benefiting me. So um, that's the main focus uh, of their both both management goals. See, you doing commercials. The acting, it's coming. I'm telling you, 23rd Martin, new win for James Bond. It's coming. James Bond. I think you can <laughs> You already got the car, looks like. Uh, James Bond. I, I know it's coming. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, another tough question. Uh, the weight cut and drug testing process for one, and, you know, it's often kind of shadowy. It's, it's a mystery. They don't really show up publicly. And that's their choice. I have no problem with it, but a lot of people in North American media have an issue with it. You know, I've asked quite a bit, a few one fighters about it and those kind of things. They have no issue, at least with the the... the hydration protocol weight cut and all those things now will choke you know became a story last week with his opinions on that talking about inconsistencies and and commenting on how the weight cutting drug testing with wada chatry came out with a response which i thought was very eloquent and and honest but then one came out with the cease and desist w- you know what kind of, what was your thoughts on that if you if you followed it like them coming out with the cease and desist against him does he have any he's saying anything true you know what's your overall assessment I haven't been following uh, what's been happening. So he pretty much complained about that 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 they said they're going to work with Wada, and that really hasn't been the case. And you know, mm-hmm. not everybody's making way, and there's stuff going on in the back room. But Chatri said, you know, it's a work in process. They're trying to work at the Wada. Have you ever heard anything in terms of like one work with Wada? Have you ever been tested yourself by Wada? Any any experience with Wada since they're they're kind of in the process of working with them more often? 
Yeah, so um, for for what I know, look, everyone everyone has talked about the the weight cutting process. Let's talk about the weight cutting process first. So, um, at the end of the day, you and your opponent are in the same room. Um, you and your opponent see each other's piss. You and you and your opponent and their cornermen are there to see you step on the scale. So it's not like it's it's not like um, yeah, I jump on the scale and quickly jump off because my opponent's coming. Mm. My, my opponent's right there, right watching me jump on. He's seeing me hold my container of my piece, handing it over, and they're testing it. He's seeing the same numbers as what I'm seeing. So um, at the, the end of the day, it's you versus him. Um, so he sees everything, you see everything, um, and if the stars align of, yeah, he, he's past hydration, yeah, he's uh, on weight, then who cares about the public? They, like, who cares if the public wants to know like what weight they weigh in at and what the hydration is? Who cares, man? It's it, The fight's not with you and the public. The fight is with you and your opponent. Mm-hmm. And as long as you and your opponent are happy with the numbers and the the results of both tests, then you're you're, you're good to go. Like who who cares about other people? <laughs> that, well, and, and that's and that's worked well for me. I'm, I've been healthy. My opponent's healthy. You know, both both athletes are 100 health and going in there, you know, to give it your made the best man win. It's not like he's he's cut so much weight and you know he's so dehydrated that he possibly can't compete and. You know, the fight's on a limbo and you've been training for the last eight and a half weeks for no reason, you know. Both athletes are 100% and you've seen it for your eyes, results, two consec- two to three consecutive days. And you know what? What <laughs> I mean, what more can you say when it comes to uh, being being on weight and being in the right uh, weight division, you know? Yeah. Now, um, moving on from that in terms of water, I've been tested. My last my last bout, I was being tested. Uh, yeah, it's I think it's through a urine test and... Um, not only urine tests, but like, so I, I got tested like three times in a space of, no, four, four times in a space of three days. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, and this so was my leading first, up to the fight or just out of fight? This, this, is, this is leading up to the fight. Okay. So, um, uh, yeah, it's a urine test. So the, the first day of weighing, um, man, you got to make sure that you, you pee like three different containers <laughs> and then, they make you. They make you. They make you pack those containers so it's not tampered with, <laughs> and you know. And they make you tape it up. Wow. They make you sign. Um, so that gets sent away, and that's on one championship side. Mm-hmm. So two consecutive days, you get two, <clears throat> two massive uh, urine tests that you got to send away, and then on fight day, I get tested before the um, before the bout. So I have to pee in a cup, wow. and they test. They test it. They test the um, the urine for any ty- types of drugs or um, PEDs, and then right after the bout, you walk out to the back and they test you again. Oh, right. And you know it's, it's all athletes. I mean, from what I know of, so um, I mean, there's no. I mean, you're getting tested, so I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Tough questions over. Now we're back to having fun. I always like to ask. The final question when I do the, these video interviews about, you know, so we can learn a little bit more about the subject. <laughs> so the subject can inform fans on something may, they may have not known about him. Like, you know, do, do you have a personal passion that we might not expect? Like, are are you a big fan of, like, The Handmaiden's Tale? Or, or do you like to fly <laughs> kites? Or maybe a bottle cap collection? Uh, you know, you like to do uh, Civil War reenactments, even though you're from Australia. You know, anything interesting that fans may have be unfamiliar with you and, and they're like holy shit martin the situation does that Tell me. Yeah, nah, um okay so for me my my hobbies and interests um obviously the main focus is my family so um whenever we get some family time that's that's the main prior, prior focus um but for me in general um if i'm selfish enough to spend some time for myself then i'll either uh, game uh so Razor has jumped on board and supplied me with um, yeah, some awesome gear I'm forever thankful for. Um, and yeah, so now I can particularly game and um, I have my motorbike, which um, I go for rides with friends and we go on track days and, you know, getting the adrenaline dump from uh, riding a two-wheeler. So um, they're, they're my main two focuses. 
other than yeah, family and hanging out with friends. Are there particular games that you're a big fan of? Yeah, look, I'm I'm more first person shooters. Mm-hmm. So um yeah, so at the moment I'm playing um CSGO, which is Counter Strike, and it's been around since I was back in high school, you know. <laughs> and uh, I overwatch with a few guys and a few fans that um that follow me as well and you know, just just playing with them and interacting with them and having a laugh. Um it's 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 like you're not even a an athlete, you're not even a fighter. You're just like a normal person, mm-hmm. and that's how they you out there in the gaming world, man. And should, would we expect to maybe see you on on a, on, a, on your mo- motorcycle with a bunch of people? Do you have like a motorcycle club? Do, do you like to call the situations? You know, do you have something like that going? You got leather jackets. Or can we can we expect to maybe bring it to Florida with Linton Vassell and and Henry Hooft, and you can call him coach and piss him off. No, no. So for me, um, yeah, I ride with a group. Uh, it's called Sydney West Riders. Uh, they're uh, um, they're just a just a small small group in the Sydney Sydney Southwest, um, which every every particular day um, on a Wednesday they go out together and maybe get food or you know ride to a particular destination where the ride is um, generally fun, um, or they have track days where you know they, they rent out a, a day where you know everyone can just fresh their bikes on a track, you know, get that adrenaline dump without killing yourself on the road. And, um, yeah, man, like, so they, those guys, the owners, Kevin and Steven, are, um, I mean, they're supporters of the situation. So, um, they know who I am and, you know, they're, they're big Vietnamese fans and, um, big Vietnamese, um, they got a big Vietnamese community behind them, um, supporting the, the, the writing group as well so um it marries up man and they're good bo- good blokes as well so i can't imagine that there's other uh you know mma world champions or champ champs on the on the club so i would imagine you're probably the muscle of the club if something goes down martin's gonna fuck this guy up that's what's coming <laughs> i stay out of it i stay out of it <laughs> i'm not that type of guy